Hello everybody and thank you so much for coming back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Riley. You may know me as Honey Rags. I'm a full-time reseller. I'm at the bins today. Um, I thought it would be a cool video to take my three kids to the bins with me. I've done a lot of thrift with me's like those have, those are a regular video thing now, but I don't think I've ever taken you guys to the Goodwill bins with me, like maybe tiny little snippets, but I'm going to try to film. I don't really know how much of it I'm even going to be able to film. Um, having three kids with me like that in itself is not video worthy because I have them with me all the time. Uh, and nine out of 10 times that I go to the bins, they are with me. So that's why I have passengers here. I do have some people who've asked me over on Instagram, like, how do you do it? How do you take your three kids to the bins? And honestly, it's just trial and error. They definitely, they know better. Um, they know to be respectful. I try to do the like hands on the card at all times rule. And I cheat because I bring their uh, electronics. I let them bring their phones, iPads, whatever they need to keep them busy. I don't feel bad about it. We're usually here for about an hour and a half or two hours when I bring all three of them. And then usually I bribe them towards the end with like a happy meal or something. So that's real. like, I literally don't have any secrets. I don't have any tips besides that, which I'm sure is pretty self-explanatory. Um, so let's go and see what I find. You want to go to the bins? The first thing that I actually made eye contact with at the bins this time around was this 1960s, late 1960s, early 1970s bucket bag, which I'm not going to go into detail with because I actually did record a haul of everything that I found during this trip, which is at the end of the video. So you guys have something to look forward to. These are Colin Stewart shoes, which for some reason just did not ring a bell. So I had to refresh my memory on them and I did a quick comp search and it doesn't seem like Colin Stewart is like a brand that I would pick up. So I left them behind. Um, usually when I'm going through the hard bins like this or the hard lines, I should say, I think that's what they call them. I'm, I'm flipping everything over. I'm just looking for shoes. If I find things along the way while I'm looking for shoes. They're just add-on bonuses. Um, I know some bins will, like for example, there's a separate bins location about 45 minutes from my house that actually brings out, they have so many shoes. They bring out shoes in their own bins and it is like shark week for resellers. So I don't even I don't even waste my time going to that one because when the shoe bins get brought up, it's like a stampede. It's It's miserable. But my bins, they kind of mix the shoes in with the randomly when the hard lines are coming out. So it's not so, you know, stampede -y. They're kind of all spread out um, throughout the hard lines. So I know there's going to be someone on the video who looks at this and says, Riley, you are not going through those bins good enough. I am, I am a lazy bins picker. I'm sure there are a lot of things that I've missed out on because no, I do not go through every single article. Really, I just, to be honest, I don't have the patience for it. So I kind of just, I'll feel around. I do check almost all the coats. Um, If it feels like a nice garment, I'll check it. For the most part, um, I kind of go with my gut too. I know any bins reseller will tell you, you never know what's going to be in the bin. You know, I've seen bins that look like they're full of old comforters and underwear and kids clothes and I found good stuff in them. But usually when I go with my three kids, I'm, you know, I kind of just go with my gut more. So that way I don't lose out on patience. And it, it so far it's worked for me. Um, I, I bring home bigger garments like coats and um, dresses and stuff more so than I do at a regular thrift shop. So this is a... Mike Bennett formals, the 1960s gown. I'm also not going to go into detail with that because that was brought up in the hall. So anyway, you know, for the most part, I, I don't make it through every single article. Um, I mean, I guess it just, it saves me some sanity, you know, by not going through every single piece. I just, I don't have the patience in me. And if I didn't bring my kids with me most of the time, I probably would try to go through them better. But I mean, whatever I'm doing, it's been working out for me because I'm not bringing too much stuff home when I go, but I do find just enough um, to keep my incoming inventory afloat. You know what I mean? So this is a 1960s champion flannel, 
which really threw me for a loop, right? Because you think champion, I mean, they've been known for sports where like probably since the brand was founded and this is just kind of like a flannel. So I looked it up and this exact same one sold for $69.95 on eBay. So I got it. I didn't do much more research than that single comp, but obviously if it sold for that price, um, I'm going to shoot for something around that price. That was a cute little California Dynasty nightgown. Um, I do have good luck with nightgowns if they're pre-1980s, like 1960s, 1970s nightgowns do well for me. And knock on wood, but I, I always have good luck at the bins with belts. Um, if you let me go to the bins for like five hours, which is a full day at the bins for me, I can usually walk out with a couple pairs of belts that are like $25 a piece, which, you know, that's not bad just for the belts, considering I'm paying like pennies for them, which is weird because usually when I go to regular thrift shops and I go through the belts, like it's a bunch of junk, like fashion bug, justice belts mixed in with the adult ones, um, like chaps belts, just, I don't know. I don't know why all the good belts are ending up at the bins, but I'm not going to complain about it. I found these Chacos. These are a solid, I don't know, probably $30 to $35, but I have to figure out if those ones are men's or women's. They look like women's, but I don't know. I will clarify, I don't usually pick up unmarked belts unless they have a really cool belt buckle and they're vintage. Remember how my bargaining chip was that I was going to get my kids a Happy Meal if they were good? That was, I might have said that at the beginning of the video. That was my bargaining chip with them. If you guys are good at the bins, I'll get you a Happy Meal. I get really bad, like, post-bins hunger. So anyway, I got myself 20 chicken nuggets and a daily double. I think that speaks for itself. I feel like I need to go to the hospital. Okay, we just got home. Um, I found these morel boots. So normally, like, I found some other morel shoes that I didn't pick up because they're, not, they're pretty popular where I live. Morel. Um, but these ones are really nice. They're like leather booties. So I think I'll list those around $20 on Poshmark. I found these Teos shoes. Teos. So Teos always sells for me around between 20 and 30. These ones I'll probably put in the middle at 25. Um, this is this is the first thing that I saw. It's a 1970s or possibly late 1960s bag with the wooden bottom. So it's like a bucket bag, but this is canvas. Some of the beadwork is coming off though. So I'm just going to put it at like 25. This is, the books are 25 cents, no matter the size of my bins. And this like normally something I would look right past, it's the heart. But when I open it up, like out of curiosity, that's a terrible example, but it has a lot of really cute, like vintage reference pictures, even like old cathedral paintings and stuff like from the catholic church i think but it's like i actually paint so i paint when i have time which is once a year um but i really like having like reference pictures and like going through books and getting like inspiration um through pictures like what i just showed you guys so not this is my favorite piece. I was going to save it, but I'm just going to show you guys. So this is a 1960s formal gown. This is the top. It looks like it's full, supposed to fold down, but it actually doesn't at all. I already tried that. Like it's supposed to fold kind of like up and out. Um, so it, it's so in your face. It looks like a costume. It's a fit and flare. It has corset boning at the kind of like over the front bust area. But what makes this one really special is that it is a Mike Bennett. So Mike Bennett, um, 1960s dresses. You can look on eBay for the comps. They're pretty good. I think I'm going to put mine closer to like 100. Just because it has like the shape of this on a mannequin and obviously on a person is going to be really spectacular. This Cynthia by Cynthia Steph. If you guys can see that. She also makes CC, CC clothing, which I don't pick up. I think they sell it at like Kohl's or something. I don't pick up the CC line of her clothing. However, I've never found um, Cynthia by Cynthia Steph dresses before. So I'm going to try my hand at it, hand at it. I think I'll probably get like 20 to 25 for that. This is for me, but I'm going to show you guys anyway. I'm still a sucker for like the oversized Sherpas. And this is Aerie. 
So it's a little bit um, like balled up, but I think I'm just gonna try to either brush it out or just wear it like this because I live in Michigan and in the fall, you can't go wrong with those. This is a capital. If you guys can see that, the E is like a three, but it's actually E. Um, look up Ride Capel on eBay and you will see the sold comps for their ski and snowboarding coats. So I know the video won't do it justice, but this is like a four pound coat. This is very, it's very nice quality. I'm guessing I can get about 40 for that. Um, this is cute. So these are Lane Bryant pants that I picked up because they are newer, like newer Lane Bryant. Um, but they're like really wide leg. Um, like wider than palazzo pants. I, I really like the, and they're capris too. So they're cute. Um, Lane Bryant, normally I don't pick it up, but that one made the cut. So this is 3.1 by Philip Leem. It's a cute little olive jacket. Um, and it has like this layer underneath. However, the sleeve is ripped, which I knew when I bought it. Um, but it's ripped almost right by the seam. So I shouldn't say the seam is ripped. It is ripped, but it is ripped right by the seam. So this should be something that I can sew up and you won't really even be able to tell. You can do like a closed stitch. Um, or I'm just gonna give it to my Nana and let her sew it because she's a seamstress. Either way, I mean, at the bins, that's definitely worth fixing up and putting on eBay for like 35, 40 bucks. Probably not 40 because of the repair, but. So this is a vintage wedding veil, but this has the really pretty like sideburn lace. I know, I really know how to sell my pieces. Sideburn lace. Um, this, like when I first looked at it, I was like, oh yeah, this is like 80s because of the beadwork. But when I looked at like the way that it was made, I feel like it's earlier than 80s. So I really, I don't, as much as I know about like vintage fashion of the 1900s, I really, I'm really lacking in the wedding department. Like wedding stuff just blends together for me. I'm not very good at dating it. This is Motley Crue 2014 band tour. So don't get excited, you guys. It's 2014. But this is funny because it's supposed it was supposed to be their final tour, right? Every good thing must come to an end. But then they had that Netflix movie out with like Nikki Six and I think didn't like MGK play it or play a role. But anyway, so they're like back on tour now. So like just kidding. But anyway, I don't even know if that's worth selling. It might not be. But I do I like Motley Crue and I'm mad about it. <laughs> that was really, okay. That was obnoxious of me. So this is a pair of 1950s hunting, hunting pants. These are wool and they're, they're really heavy. I want, I wish I had a scale. I would show you guys how much these weigh. They're really heavy, really thick. I could, I don't know how people ever wore these, but if you look up 1950s, 1960s, men's plaid wool hunting pants comps that's a mouthful um you'll see you know they can go for upwards of like 50 bucks so the, this is a vintage red wings jacket so usually with vintage jackets um especially 80s and 90s i like to have the big logo in the back like detroit pistons jackets with the big logo i can always get like 50 60 bucks out of those this one doesn't have a logo in the back so i almost didn't pick it up but I did notice that the sleeves have like these like ribbon logos, which is kind of cool. Gives it just a little bit of razzle dazzle. This is a Roots Athletic shirt. I'm in a really bad area of my house right now. So it's making all of my garments look like way worse than what they are. The condition of this is great. It's bright white um, and uh, there's like no discoloration anywhere. So that's an easy like 19, 20 bucks. These are vintage 1990s Levi's, woman size eight. Um, so I've made a video on how to date Levi's, but you flip the tag. This only works for like a certain, like 15 years that they produced that it works. Um, so this is 0992. You want to look at that second row, second row, second column, 0992. So the ninth month of 1992. So these were made in September of 1992. They do not have the orange thingy the orange tab or else I'd put a little bit more on them these I'll probably just put it like 30 which is pretty standard for my early 90s Levi's um this is 1980s acid washed denim jacket so if this would have been just a regular denim or acid washed denim jacket I wouldn't have brought it home 
but it's the pink tone that sold it for me so this is the pink tone acid wash so it i i'm guessing like 24 dollars. this is cool so this is they had a lot of old books which they usually do this is an 1890 book on women's health and what it says physical life of woman and it doesn't say of woman like plural it says physical life of woman so this was written by a doctor i don't know I don't even, it doesn't say his first name, but it says DG. I can almost guarantee this was written by a man because it's 1890. Go figure. But it says like, okay, there's chapters on like painful periods, the engagement, um, what fathers give their children, the wife during pregnancy, attention to dress necessary. Like it's so when to marry. Like, it's it's going to be so ironic to read because, you know, 1890, like, women couldn't even vote. So, I am I bought this because I'm like, I can't wait to just read it and talk shit about everything that's in it. I found some Birkenstocks. Um, they're size 41, so a nice bigger size. I, I put my Birkenstocks from the bins, unless they're, like, nice ones. I put the classic ones at 18 bucks, and they're always sold by the time I open my eyes the next day. I know some people are like, um, oh, you're taking the comps down. I'm really not. It's just when I buy Birkenstocks um, on Poshmark for myself, I will, uh, I'll just keep like refreshing every like 30 minutes until I find a pair that's like 18 bucks. So that's what I pay for them used. Um, so I list them for 18 bucks unless they're like a nice style. Like I said, I found these Chacos. They're in really nice condition. They have a little bit of like film on them. Um, but that's just like something I could rub right off with a wipe. I found Crocs clogs. They don't have the holes for the gibbets, but they're still, it's a nice pair of Crocs. Probably put $18 on those. I also found Dansko loafers. Um, believe it or not, Dansko is like cuter styles. I don't even want to say cuter because it depends on the person. But, like, their styles that I think are going to sell quicker than the clogs never do. Like, the cl the classic Dansko clogs always sell the quickest for me out of any other Dansko style. And then, this is the last thing I have to show you guys. So, I vintage shoes, I usually don't pick up unless they're, like, pre-1920 or, like, 1960s mod. I'll pick up. But I usually don't pick up vintage shoes. Even though there is a market for them on Etsy. Especially, especially with people who, like, do the vintage cosplay and stuff. But these are old wedding shoes. Um, they have the lace and then they have the cute little ribbon at the front. Um, and the only thing I did notice, they have like, they're missing that tiny little, little bump. What's that called? <laughs> but anyway, I don't think that'll be a big deal. I think someone will appreciate these. So these are cute. I think I'll list these on Etsy around like $30 if the sizing is accurate you know because sizing vintage shoe sizing is also pretty bad these aren't that old like I I, sh I don't want you guys to think these are like from the 1920s or anything these are probably honestly like 1970s 1980s I can tell by the bottoms because you guys can see the like mass manufactured bottom so this was these were made at a time when shoes were being mass manufactured okay i know you guys don't come here for history lessons i'm sorry okay i'm gonna let you guys go <laughs> if you made it this far thank you so much for watching um i'm gonna leave a link down below in the description to my instagram honey.rags as always thank you for watching happy thrifting happy selling and stay safe